Psalm, chapter 125, and a beautiful psalm. Many of them are. I don't mean some are not beautiful. Song of Degree. They that trust in the Lord. That's not just Israel. Because we're looking at a psalm that goes directly into the millennium. And there's Israel mentioned in the verse, or the chapter, but I'm going to be in the millennium too. And if I keep trying to do as well as I can and I don't blow it, blow it and lose a reward or inherit it, I have put my trust in the Lord. True born-again Christians have put their trust in the Lord. And inheritance and crowns and rewards go to the Christians that serve the Lord. Now, I don't know what happens to the worldly Christians. I, I know they don't get crowns. I know they don't get rewards. And I know they don't get an inheritance. So let's leave them out for a moment. For those who are on the field of, of ministering the word, preaching the gospel, praying. They that trust in the Lord. You can't say I trust in the Lord and, and walk in the world because that's not what the Lord said. The Lord said, and with James, be doers of the word. And if you're going to do that, you're trusting the Lord. Faith shall be as Mount Zion. That's the mountain in Jerusalem that Jerusalem settled upon, which cannot be removed. So what's he saying? Those that trust in the Lord cannot be removed. Jesus said, "Fear him that's not, you know, fear him that's able to destroy the body and deliver the soul into hell." And yet the writer of the psalm is saying, "Those who trust in the Lord, as a mountain in Jerusalem, where Jesus Christ will be in the millennium." That mountain is not going to be moved. You're not going to be moved. Man is not going to move that mountain. The devil ain't going to move that mountain. But abide is forever. There's a heavenly Mount Zion. There's the, the Mount Zion on the earth, and there's a there's a heavenly city of Jerusalem sitting on, on a mountain. The Bible speaks about, I think the Psalms are, are the sides of the north. And I know Jesus said, if you had faith, uh, he's talking to the disciples, you can say to this mountain, be lifted up and, and cast off into the, in the ocean. But our trust in God, and this is a statement found in the Old Testament of eternal security. Your trust in the Lord cannot be removed. It bideth forever. Now, an Old Testament saint, when he died, he didn't go to heaven. He went to Abraham's bosom. Until Jesus Christ redeemed them on the cross and suffered and died, according to Scripture, and was buried and arose again the third day, according to Scripture. Then the Old Testament saints came out of the grave. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, and there are seven of them, seven main mountains. So the Lord is around, so the Lord is about his people, Israel, from henceforth, ever, henceforth even forever. All right, as there's mountains around Jerusalem, and there is, and, you know, there's seven main mountains, but yet, you know, there's mountains within mountains of mountains of mountains. God says, hey, I'm surrounded by the people of Israel. Listen, Jerusalem belongs to Israel. It doesn't belong to the Gentiles. Your faith and trust God cannot be removed and as strong as Mount Zion. And God's presence is as the presence of the mountains in the area. And notice how he says, henceforth, even forever. And the Psalms are written in the Old Testament. 
Now, the nation of Israel is out of the will of God today. As a corporate, Israel is up on the shelf, but not individually. And yet, and yet, God is still with the nation of Israel. And he's got a period of seven years called Jacob's Trouble. He's going to chastise the nation of Israel for their sin. But he still loves them. They're still his people. He's still there. And we got to go into the false teachings of science and history and man and religion. That there are some say God's all finished with Israel. He is not. What does forever mean? Now, if the Holy Spirit, if the writer of this song, and this doesn't say who wrote this song, if the writer of the song says forever, and the Holy Spirit is like, uh uh uh, I'm going to finish with Israel. I'm done with Israel pretty soon. The Holy Spirit would not allow that to be in there. This forever is just as much as all the other forever. And so if you're going to teach, if you're going to preach, and you're going to exalt yourself and your class of people and religious people and whatever means that you are, that God is all finished with the Jew, here is one verse of many verses in the Bible that you make God a liar. So you can add to the Bible, and people do, modern Bible. You can subtract the Bible, and people do modern Bible. And then you can turn around by your foolish statements and your foolish preaching and your foolish teaching. You can make a passage in the Bible not be so. I'll show you another place just real quick that people and preachers and, and make the Bible a lie. Uh, Philippians. We'll go over and look at this one. How often this verse? Like my pages turn over. Philippians chapter four, and this is just one of many verses. Chapter four, verse nineteen. Here's one of them Bible verses that everybody clings to. But my God shall supply all your need according to the riches of glory by Christ Jesus. That verse alone is bunk. What'd you say, Styler? I said that verse alone. Verse 19 alone is bunk. The context of what is being spoken that Paul is writing to the Philippians, you guys are actually giving money to the Lord. You're giving time to the Lord. You're praying for the Lord. You're suffering for the Lord. You're doing for the Lord. And because you are helping us, you are helping Christians, you, you are going out in the world with the gospel, you are doing what God told you to do, you, you are applying yourself, you are of the word of God, and you are doing what you're supposed to. God shall supply your needs. That verse does not go down on a worldly Christian. Because I can think about some, some worldly Christian needs that James says you ask amiss. Where's that Owen? Oh, I think it's Philippians 4. Oh, here we go, 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That verse alone is bunk. When you don't take the chapter in context of what Paul is saying to Philippians, I can do all three things through Christ with strength. I mean, what about the morons going to go on top of the highest building and jump off the building and I could survive in the name of Jesus? There are morons involved in healing and miracles that will do that nonsense. Verse 13 and verse 19 are one of the biggest scriptures that religions will quote. And make the word of God a lie. I can do all things. I can think of something. I'm going to go out and just say and live it up. Through Christ. I'm going to do it all through Christ. And Christ is going to strengthen me to. Really? That's almost like Christ is the answer. Yeah, he is. Okay. Christ is the answer. Uh, uh, 
I got pregnant and I'm not married and I'm gonna go do the I'm gonna go get abortion. Christ is the answer. You can't just throw verses out there. You can't just say, uh, and, and you know, put it on on a plaque. And listen, when when you quote, "As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord," that's a great one verse that can be applied. But when you go out and build the ark on this side of Calvary, there's nowhere in the scriptures to tell you to go build the ark. Oh, the Bible says build an ark. He wasn't talking to you. I suppose we got two arks, I think it is. There are some that believe in John chapter 6 when Jesus said, eat my, my body and drink my blood. They just take it literal. It was not to be literal. And it's for chapter, two, uh, verse one, chapter 125, verse 2. And when you say God's all finished with Israel, you just might as well get yourself white out and white out verse 2. Or how about you keep verse 2 and you get the religion, all the people that teach that God's all finished with Israel. Why don't you just have God curse them? Well, God said, I will curse them that curse you. When you say God's all finished with Israel, you're passing the curse. You, you better shut up. Listen, the KKK cannot be a Christian organization. Never mind the, bur the cross burning. Never mind that. The fact is that the KKK will openly discourage and hate the Jewish person, the Jewish people. When God says, I will curse them that curse you. You cannot be a Bible believer. You cannot be a Christian and hate the Jews. You mean I'm not saved? I'm going to say, that's a not very, very, very close line. Especially when you find out that Jesus Christ was Jewish. You know, you're Jesus that saved your soul. You have to believe he's virgin born. You have to believe he's God. You have to believe that his mother and his family were of Judah. Or at least know he's Jewish. A Gentile Jesus in Hollywood ain't going to save your soul. A Gentile Jesus in a movie made for the church is not going to save your soul. A black Jesus is not going to save your soul. You're changing the Bible. So let's leave verse 2 of Psalm 125 that God is with his people. God is surrounded by his people, though he's mad at them right now. Listen, you got a father, a child, let's say, let's say his child was playing with matches in the family car and burnt the family car down. Papa's going to be mad. Now, a loving father that loves his child is not going to say, I, I disowned you, get, you know, pack your bags and move out. <laughs> Hopefully, a Bible-dedicated father with love is going to chastise that child. A rotten, terrible father would say, uh, you know, I am so mad at you, you, you leave. Well, I know. Many cases that you know, it was the child. Listen, the prodigal son left, not the father. The father didn't tell the prodigal son to leave. The son left on his own. And many children with, with true Bible-believing Christian faith, you know, I, you're, you're too strict, you're too much Bible, and I'm going to leave. Now there's cases where the child has sinned, the child has broke the law, and then you got to say, okay, if you're going to live under my roof, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You're not going to serve the Lord, you're not going to do right, then you're old enough to make a living, you move out, and you go ahead and make your living. Israel is God's people. They're always God's people. And God is angry with right now. And God has set them aside. God has called the Gentiles to salvation. 
to put a stumbling block before Israel. Seven years, God's going to chase in Israel, and then God's going to send his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the church to go get him. They're going to go get Rahab. You know what Rahab was? She was a harlot. Go get the harlot. You know who God told Hosea to marry? And I want her, I want you to take that woman. I want you to picture as a nation Israel. Hosea, you're me, and you're married to that harlot. You know who that harlot was that Hosea was to marry? And it was a, that, she was a harlot. That's what she was. And it was to picture Israel. Hosea and, and, and Jericho coming back. We're coming back, and we're going to go and pick up the, the harlot in the cursed city. So let's leave verse 2 there. And let's say God loves Israel and is always going to love Israel. And I believe in my heart that the new earth, that the new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem, I believe the new earth goes to the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Now that rest you find often, and that rest you find in, in Hebrews, talking to who? Hebrews! Yay! Oh, sorry. You know what that rest is for the Jewish man? That rest is in the land. When that land has got rid of all the idols and the gods and the Gentiles, and it is their land. It is under God, the king. Not a man king, but God as their king. Under Jesus Christ, the king of kings and lord of lords. A thousand year rest. And then when you go off into the moonland, off into the eternal life, I believe it's the earth. The wicked are not going to be part of that millennial rest. The Bible says, if you, if you didn't visit the, the, my people, if you didn't feed my people, you didn't help my people. You didn't heal my people. You didn't visit my people. You are as the goats and you are cast off in, into hell. And you that helped my people and you that healed my people and you that visited my people, you that took care of my people, enter thou into the rest, the millennium. There's going to be no, that millennial version 3, verse 3. You know, you know what that means? You know when we get to the millennium? We mount up on the horses. We come back. We pick up Israel. And Jesus Christ brings them as Moses brought them. And he crosses as where Joshua crosses. And we go into the promised land. You know what that verse says right there in the promised land? There's no wicked. They've been cast off into hell. They've been trotted under feet of Jesus. At least the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity that is the whole story of israel what happened after joshua got them in the land what happened after judges making my highlight my bible here what happened did not israel get the land yes what happened in judges they went after the gods they went after the heathen they married the heathen they did everything against god so you know why God gets rid of the, the wicked people at the second advent and destroys them before we all come into, the, into Israel? Because God does not want the book of Judges to happen again. God does not want uh, Solomon and David to mess up their lives with heathen women again. You don't need to worry as a Christian. You're not going to sin in the afterlife. God's going to remove that. And God's going to pick, God is going to protect his people by removing what God told Israel and told Moses and told Joshua to do when he get in that land, wipe them all out. And Israel said, I like that. Oh, that God's interesting. Oh, their women are beautiful. Jesus Christ comes along. Out of here. You're dead. You're gone. Take that cathedral out of here. Take those temples out of here. Take them gods out of here. Take the wicked out of here. You love my people. You help my people. 
Come on in. Listen, we need a revival in America. We need a revival in England. You got to get out the Muslims. You got to get out the Catholics. You got to get out the morons, the Mormons. You got to get out the whole witnesses. You got to get out the Christian Science. You got to get out the Pentecostals. You got to you got to get rid of the uh, Catholic churches. You got to get rid of the temples. You got to get rid of the mosque. You got to get rid of the yoga. You got to get rid of the yin yang. You got you got to get rid of. 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 And you got to tear up the Constitution. Say we cannot have every god we want and religion of all the religions we want. You want a revival in America, you got to get rid of all that crap, and you got to bring in Jesus Christ, you got to bring in the King James Bible, you got to bring the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you got to help that Jew, and you got to tell anybody who's the enemy of that Jew, we're not going to purchase your oil, and you mess with that Jew, you're going to find trident missiles coming at your butt. Did I just hear the, did I hear the PLO just launch missiles in the, in the is, I heard that? All right, put it declared. You got 48 hours to gather all the Jews in the area, put them in protection. Get all the Jews out of the area in protection. I'm telling you, in 48 hours, we're going to bomb the heck out of anybody that puts missiles in Israel. Call up all the ballistic submarines and tell them, get all 24 missiles ready. We're going to launch. We're going to protect the nation. We're going to take all the Jews. We're going to put them in protection. And we're going to get rid of their enemy. That ain't going to happen. Because the Arabs have got the oil. The Arabs have got the dinosaur poop or whatever you get the oil comes from. That ain't going to happen. Jesus Christ is going to eliminate religion. There will be no religions in the millennium. You know what the Bible said? I forget which prophet said. The, one of the prophets say, if your son comes home and tries to tell you about Jesus and witness about Jesus, you're, you're to kill him. Because you already know about Jesus. He's in Jerusalem. You will have no media, no no politics in the millennium. And many American Christians are going to be upset. The millennium. Now we're going to be in heaven for seven years. I believe during that seven years. I don't know how long, but we're going to be we're going to be the judgment seat of Christ during that seven years. I don't know how long. Maybe it's the whole seven years. I believe when we're raptured, that's it. We go to the judgment seat of Christ. I think when the rapture is over, I think we actually mount up and we come back for Israel. I, and I can't prove that. I can't prove the, the tribulation period. I, I mean, the, the judgment seat of Christ is the full seven year. But then we come back. We come back with the nation of Israel and God's going to set it all straight. God will wipe out science, religion, evolution, education, and wipe out anything against God and his people. And there'll be a rest. A thousand year rest. Even Satan is chained up. The false prophet and the Antichrist has already been cast in the lake of fire that burns forever. Least the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Jesus said, I ain't going to let judges happen again. Uh-uh. Joshua failed. Judges won. They failed. They didn't wipe everybody out. Jesus is like, I will. And then Jesus Christ will judge those nations that allow to go in. There will be Gentiles. But there will be no Gentiles that will get in by the skin of their teeth. There will be no Gentiles that will go in there by a loophole. They will be righteously judged by the judge. They, the, the Bible says they will be judged. The sheep will be put on one side and the goats will be put on the other. The goats go to hell and the sheep, I mean, uh, yeah, the sheep go on in. When Jesus Christ brings the Jews in, man, he's going to bring them under complete protection. He's not going to allow the mess that happened in Judges. You know what the book of Judges teaches? It teaches what, what Paul told the Christian. You're to separate yourself from the wicked. You're not to have any fellowship with the wicked. 
You either have Christ or Belial. Judges took both. And look at the mess judges ended up. You find the Catholic Church in the book of Judges, Micah. You find Sodomites in the book of Judges, the, the children of Dan. And the children of Dan are protecting the Sodomites. You know why America is the way she is? Because she's done the book of Judges. He allowed all to be, to be all, 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 to be all. He allowed everything and then anything. And there's violence in the land. Do good, O oh Lord, unto those that be good. That just, that's a bold statement that the psalm is writing. Imagine him having to tell God, do good. Now, there's two aspects of it, doing good. God, what you just had me to write, what you told me to write, do it. It's good. Glory to God. And also, have not we read in some of the Psalms that the writers have looked at the evil and look at the wicked people like, you know, you know, they don't suffer like we do, Lord. Man, look at their props are in. They're making money. The children are happy. They're dancing. They're just having a good old time. And, you know, a brother in the Lord at church, he's in the hospital. A brother in the Lord, this family, they just lost, you know, the husband and, and, and uh, father. And, and this one over here, the car broke down. This one, he, I mean, he's spending all his money on pills. And, Lord, he, he just lost his job. And the, the, the rich don't do that, Lord. That could be another thing. But we know all that work out for God to God's good. And to them that are upright in their heart. See, it's a heart condition. Listen, you can go to church and look good. And be good. And your heart be as filthy as anything. God knows. God knows what you are the rest of the week and not just Sunday morning. Or even maybe Sunday evening or midweek mid service. God knows what's in your heart. As for such as turn aside unto the crooked ways, to the good in verse 4, the worldly ones in verse 5, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. You want to go the wrong way, God said, okay, I'll send some more people to help you. There it is. People say, why is there so many religions out there and they say so many things? And that's what you want. That's the God you want. You want a God that enjoys sodomites and sexual pleasures? You can go find a church. You want a God that will lift you up and exalt who you are and what you are and give you money for your business? You can go find a church like that. They're not going to lead you to the right path, but that's what you want. God ain't going to force the Old Testament Jew, and God ain't going to force the Christian to do right. And yet God, in his that's what you want? You better be careful. You better watch out. You better watch what you ask for God. Because God may give you what you want, and it may not be for your welfare. It may hurt and destroy you. How can God do that? Because he knows your heart, verse 4. And if your heart is not after God and doesn't want to do what God, anything that God... All right, God's okay, fine, go ahead. And I'll put people in your path, and they'll help you walk in wickedness. But peace, God will allow you to go back. Slain. Listen, did that father stop the prodigal son? Did he? What happened to that prodigal son once he left his father's house? Did not the people come along and help him waste his money? Did they not drive him into whoredom and drunkenness? And, and the Bible says, yeah. 
the kid, the son left the father and then up showed workers of iniquity in that guy's life. That's what he wanted. And he got exactly what he wanted. Now, God used it to his glory only after he lost everything. And sometimes God will give you what you want, and it doesn't work out for your glory. It'll work out for wood, hair, stubble if you're saved. But that's what you wanted. Listen, I, I try to help many Christians. I've seen the path they were going down, and I look on this side, and their, their lives are destroyed, and they're just out in the world in troubles. And I, I try to help you. And it's foolish that pastors actually help them. Now they're not in church, or the ones that are in church, they're in a terrible church. And they're not doing right. And they actually believe they're doing right. Listen, you want to be entertained? You can find a church will entertain you with the music. And you can sing Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. They ain't praising God. That's praising yourself. Man, get out of John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. Get into the study show thyself. Get some more words. Man, if all you know is hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, 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 you're a babe. But peace. You want peace. Everybody wants peace shall be upon Israel, Jerusalem, the city of peace, through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord. Of there is no peace coming to this world except by Jesus Christ. And the world don't want Jesus. So the world won't get peace. You want to fear coronavirus? Good. I'll close your churches. We got a Job 1 and Job chapter 2. The devil's like, hey, let me go. go ahead. We'll do it. Because you know what God and the devil are doing right now? I know what they're doing. I don't know the time frame, but I know what they're doing. And you're going to stop it because you're going to go vote. I pray you don't stop it by your voting. I hate to get to heaven and find out, oh, yeah, the rapture would happen years ago, but you voted it out. I hate to find out. Hey, by voting for that candidate, you extended the rapture. <laughs> but what are you talking about? The devil knows and God knows there's a kingdom and Jacob's trouble. And every single day, God and the devil are getting together doing what they need to do to set up the Antichrist. What am I doing for that? Am I going to vote for Paul? For political and, and politicians to make a bigger and better world? Absolutely correctly not. Am I going out there to feed the poor? Nope. Am I going out there to fight the crime? No, I'm not. What am I doing? I'm going out there to preach the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ that they may know that there is hope, there's a blessed hope, there is salvation, and their salvation rested up only upon Jesus Christ and that their religion, their education, their wherever, whatever else they believe but Jesus, that's the only way to save them. And if you are a Christian and you want to learn and you continue to learn, I will teach you the Bible. I will show you the Bible. And the moment you want to learn more, I will give you more. I will allow God to help me to help you to grow. And the moment that you will get offended and you don't like what I say, and I go against what you're doing and you fall away, I'm going to let you go. Now, I'm not going to say do good unto him, Lord. I'll say good, uh, do good. He wants to grow, Lord. He, he, he's having trouble with this problem. But Lord, he's witnessing. He, he, she's doing this. Lord, help be good to, to good for them. But they want to fall away. I don't want that iniquity. Let them have somebody else to be workers of iniquity. And you watch who the you watch who they'll turn to, and you watch who those who those workers of iniquity are, and it will surprise you. 
years after that moment, and it takes years after to look at it, and they're like, wow, I didn't believe that person was going to be. You want peace? It comes upon Israel. It doesn't come upon a pol uh, political party. It comes through Jesus Christ. I don't know. The Jews today, they're selling their land. They're giving up their land to the UN and all the, all the, and they don't get the peace. Promise them. They'll get peace through Jesus Christ.